This episode of Taking It to the House was brought to you by EBH Fitness Studios. It's a way of life. I'm Dr. Timothy Hoover, and I'm taking it to the house. I'm Dr. C. Victor Urban III, and I'm taking it to the house. Hey, Vic, it's good to see you again. Missed you last week, which is part of my opening burn. The weather affected our production last week, so if you didn't see a, a, a new show last week, we apologize. The weather did affect us as well. I want to say and send out prayers to all of those who may be and still suffering, especially those of you in Texas who lost power, who lost water. Some of them were even family members, but even those who lost life who are suffering even today. So I want to say my prayers are to you. But what I was able to see last week during our heart, one of our hearts as winners since I've been here is humanity at its best. The homeless being fed, being brought in and sheltered. And so I want to say thank you for those kind hearted people, those saints, and I would even call them angels who were looking out for their fellow man. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, thanks. Oh, God. Obviously, Texas is very near and dear to my heart, considering about what two thirds of the family lives in Texas to include my parents. So last week was definitely troublesome just really seeing some of the challenges that American people are going through. Uh, but the other side of that, of course, is seeing the humanity that came through and helped. So it's great to see you. Great to hear from parents and my Thank cousins you, and aunts. Uh, it's good to see you all. So if we missed last week, hey, you know, it, it will take a natural disaster, which it did. So in line with that, just to try to lighten it up a little bit. One last comment that I had personally about NFL is the Super Bowl. A good news story, if you will. So you all remember there was a scene when Tyreek Hill was getting his head smashed open by Antoine Winfield. Antoine Winfield, of course, was the safety for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And when he made a crucial stop, he threw up the, the peace sign. Well, you have to understand the story behind the story. But four weeks earlier, Tyreek Hill lit the Tampa Bay Buccaneers up to the point over 200 yards, almost 300 yards receiving and a lot of times when he would pass one of the defenders on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers he'd hang up his two fingers saying peace like I'm out of here deuces you can't catch me so why at the Super Bowl which is supposed to be the pinnacle of all sports also supposed to be the biggest time you're going to talk trash why not and to know that you have a rematch against a team that lit you up only weeks prior and so you make a great defensive stop and you say peace because guess what we're about to win a championship they find Antoine Winfield. Yes, the NFL find Antoine Winfield where everyone says, really? But the good news story of this is that he took that bad experience getting fined for playing football and a little bit of taunting, and he donated it to a local school in Tampa Bay. So he took a bad situation, made it great. So my props to Antoine Winfield for being that human, for being that person, that citizen that says, I'm not going to allow this to cause a, a, a catastrophic discussion between he and the NFL, but really turn something bad and something good. So props to him. But as we start looking at props and we looked and we started obviously unk with the situation happening in Texas, I don't want to take it doom and gloom, but I have to, I was watching the news yesterday and I saw what happened with Tiger Woods. And I can tell you, it felt that eerie feeling like we did last January with Kobe Bryant. And I'm saying, wow, another one of our greats. This is the first, first quarter of our new year. And we've already lost some greats. And so to see that car, uh, his vehicle in that condition, and then starting hearing the reports of what had happened or the alleged reports on his injuries, I, I, I was taken back. I mean, it, it, it was scary. And even now, and you don't want to think about, is he going to come back again or, can he play? It's just very eerie feeling. And watching and hearing the medical diagnoses, I'm not a medical person. I don't understand it. So I would love to hear from you from, you know, your perspective, your expertise, you know, even from him recovering as a physical therapist, him recovering. Is it possible? What What did you think we saw of it? Thanks, Vic. Uh, like you, I was devastated. And the first thing I thought about what how is he the man? Not the golfer, but how is he the man? So what do we know? For those who don't know, he was in a rollover accident, single car uh, vehicle accident yesterday. And so he suffered multiple injuries. Like you hear words of comminuted, comminuted, as well as compound and open fractures. Well, several bones in his lower extremities were broken or fractured. When you hear the open, 
actually one of the bones was sticking through, more than likely the right tibia was sticking through the skin. Comminuted, well, that tibia also had several fractures or breaks in it. And so, uh, devastating, how does it happen? Well, when you assemble a trauma team, one of the first things they're going to know is mechanism of injury. Well, the mechan mechanism of injury is the vehicle and the accident. What Tiger Woods suffered was common for somebody who has a front impact crash of their vehicle. Think about your feet. Where are your feet when you're driving? They're actually under the engine, in the engine, but in a compartment. As the engine compresses, like water, your bones, his bones, took the shape of the compressed metal of the hood, trunk, and engine. And so unlike water, bones are going to fracture. They're going to break. They won't go anywhere. They're going to snap. They bent and they broke. They had to extricate him using uh, an axe to take him out the windshield as well as a crowbar. So he was actually pinned and stuck underneath there. So that's the, the bad part is he has multiple fractures of the ankle of the right leg, as well as the tibia of the right leg. That's where you hear the comminuted as well as the compound fractures. And so they had to stick a rod within the tibia. Man wasn't meant to do that, but that's how we do for preservation of life and limb. And that's what they did. His life is saved, thank goodness. And the longer he goes away from the surgery itself, he can be okay life-wise. But the limb itself, there's a lot of things we have to worry about. Multiple fractures, multiple opportunities for infections, multiple surgeries. Rod inserted into the tibia, surgeries why? Well, you heard compartmental syndrome, or compartment syndrome. Like a balloon, the more fluid you put in there, it's gonna have to expand and then it's gonna go to its saturation point and then wanna pop. And that's what was going on in his lower leg is swelling, edema, fluid going into a compartment within probably the calf was getting in there and it can be really devastating and very painful. They had to go in and do a release around the fascia, around the muscle to be able to get that swelling down. So there are many things going on. I mentioned tibia, fractures, ankle, fractures, pins, screws, rods being put in there. And yet he's alive. Thank goodness he's alive. We're not talking about Tiger Woods in the past tense. We're talking about Tiger Woods presently, the man. Right now, he has multiple surgeries that are probably going to continue. I have a patient who has had a rod inserted. I have worked on people with rods inserted. Let's talk about rehab. He's not going to even be able to walk on that leg. Well, probably four, six weeks, if not longer, just being able to weight bear. He won't be able to do that. Multiple surgeries are, are to be expected. Screw is going to be, have to be taken out. He's going to need rehab immediately. So rehab will be, he, we're gonna to try to minimize his muscle wasting or atrophy. So he can do, still do leg lifts and everything once they do clear him for physical therapy so that when he is able to weight bear that he will be able to do that hopefully with minimal atrophy as possible. So right ankle again, right tibia. General, the, the man just recovering from a back surgery, he's had five back surgeries and everything is linked. Everything is a chain. Back hip, knees, ankle. So Tiger is in a bad way, but guess what? He's still alive. So prognosis, he'll be able to walk again. And for us walking, maybe with a limp, he may be able to get full range of motion and full gait back. He may be able to. The doctors, the orthopedic doctors are just trying to get a semblance of a leg once they put the rod in once they put the screws in and put joints back together as they should be. But there are times where we just don't get it right. So I, I, he should be able to walk again. Running is another thing. Golfing, I'm not even gonna go there because before he can even play competitive golf again, he's gonna need extensive rehab. And so his rehab, and I'm talking about multiple surgeries coming up, he's probably not gonna be playing competitive golf I want to say two, maybe three years. I already talked about no weight bearing. So there's going to be some sitting around, not being able to do anything. Think about what a golfer does or a, a right hand swinger. You, you play baseball. You're using that back leg. Guess what? That right leg to push, 
Use momentum to gain torque. You're gonna to use your back. You're gonna to wanna to push off just to get swing through and follow through. He's not gonna be able to do that immediately, not for a while. So if the surgery was success, success and I heard it was, he's stable now. Thank goodness he's stable now. Thank goodness he's even alive if he saw the accident. Thank goodness for modern medicine and he's getting the best. But he's not out of the woods yet because there's still opportunities for infection. And one of my patients has had multiple infections. They insert a rod into your bone and expect it, your, body, your body to accept this rod. It doesn't always accept that rod. So that is a matter of rejection from a, 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 an implant, a rod being inserted. So we got to pray that your, his body accepts that. That's number one, the screws as well, and any hardware that they put into your body. So he's got a, a, a long road to hoe. Like you, Vic, I was devastated. I was shaken. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Tiger the man. I'm also a fan of Tiger the golfer. Didn't know anything about golf, didn't care about golf. Yeah, I knew a little bit because my brother had Sports Illustrated and I read about Jack Nicholas and, and, and others. But I followed golf because of Tiger. And he brought a lot of people together because you don't see Republican, you don't see Democrat, you don't see that. You just see excellence on the golf course. And he, it was happening from a black man of Asian descent as well. So long way to go. Uh, uh, for Tiger, and I'll be happy to entertain any other questions. And if you have questions as well, as well out there for rehabilitation on Tiger Woods, hit us up on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and, and, and let me know what other questions you may have. You may have personal rehabilitation questions for yourself. I'll be happy to entertain those as well. But Vic, did you have any other questions regarding uh, Mr. Tiger Woods? Yeah, I'm reminded of the Alex Smith injury, and they talked about septus and him and Jeopardy losing his leg is is without going. I mean, we don't know, but is that injury was that injury significant enough where he could have lost a leg? Are we out of the are we out of the woods for that, or is that still something that can happen moving forward? I love the question. I love that question. A lot of people think about uh, uh, the bones. But uh, we, most of us don't think about the vessels, those being the nerve vessels, the blood vessels. We think about the heart pumping blood to the area, but blood has to come back. So when you have a risk of losing late, it's gonna be because of poor circulation, number one. So we're assuming that they did everything right and he didn't have any damage to the major arteries going up and down the leg that he and veins as well that will be able to allow the blood to get to that area to allow for healing and then to return and circulate. So he is not out of the woods. We are still going to be concerned about that. And then any nerve damage as well. So good point, Alex Smith. He had multiple surgeries. He had multiple surgeries, but I'm glad you brought up Alex Smith because that competitor in Alex Smith, he wanted to get back on the field and it drove him, it motivated him. And so we don't know yet what Tiger wants because we do know if you have that internal competitive nature that's still, and we know Tiger and that, that stare and that glare and that grind that he's on, we don't know what his motivation is, but if he has that motivation, he's gonna wanna get back on the golf course. But at his age uh, and with these multiple injuries, it's going to be several years before he gets back on. That's assuming that he has nothing more than he, essential uh, uh surgeries for correction good wow, question that's surreal because he um he's actually being interviewed uh by jim nance and he'd asked the question jim nance wow. had asked the question hey are you going to be here for the masters and he said hey you know pretty much god willing i will be i do have this my back and i'm working some things so the how surreal it is the next day he has the accident and he may not even walk the right way. And so you talked about that competitive edge early in the year. We talked about Drew Brees getting, you know, ribs broken at the age of 42, you know? So here it is. Tiger Woods is 45, 44, 45. And that competitive side, we're talking about the mind. So the mind one way is saying, yes, I'm in this thing, but the mind, the other side is this is an injury. And that's another, another I can imagine another psychological aspect that he's going to go through over the ensuing 
weeks and months and years of recovery. And yes. at that age, just really how does, you know, him keeping his mind sharp, keeping his body ready. But, uh, you know, like I said, not even looking at him as, as the golfer, more just him as the man. It's still a traumatic injury. Uh, there's the mental side I'm, I'll be concerned about. It's the physical side. And then him reaching down and saying, I, I want to be back. I, I, like you said, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I will. I will interject. And I'm glad you we're talking about the Alex Smiths and that motivation and that drive and that com com competitive spirit that they have in rehab. The, then half the battle is already won because he wants to be in rehab. He wants to get back on. But I will tell you this is most of these star athletes, these Uber athletes, these like, like Tiger, the, the Kobe Bryant's, they want to go out on their own terms and they don't want this injury or, or an injury or somebody else to tell them they don't have it no more. They can't do it. And so nobody sits up and say, I'm going to have this car accident. Nobody asked for this. He didn't ask for this, but it happened. Will he be able to accept never playing golf at a, that edge or that level again? Will he be able to accept that? Or will it be the driving force that gets him back on the golf course? But as a rehab specialist, as a therapist, we're going to do everything we can to help him meet his goal. But first, let's get your gait right. Let's get symmetry of your body. Let's get those muscles aligned. Let's get those bones aligned. The orthopedic doctors have tried to do that in surgery, and they're gonna, there's going to be more surgeries. Now, in rehab, once we get to the rehab state, is... Let's, let's use his motivation to help us help him, but also protect him, not allowing him to exceed limits and staying safe so he doesn't have any reoccurring problems later on. Good points. Good wow. questions. Wow. Wow. I, I will continue watching the story. I will continue even speaking with you offline because I'm I'm intrigued. I learned a lot just hearing you. My mind is so many different directions. My wife would be laughing at me uh, just because of my analytical side and just like, wow, this is the house because six weeks from now, then it's more surgeries and then just so much. So I'm sure this story will continue to develop. And uh, I just want to switch to another topic, but it definitely disturbed me watching it yesterday. I was reminded. So I felt a little more comfort when it did say, hey, it's non-life threatening. Great. Now let's get to this next piece because just seeing that, hold on, hearing hold on. that before you go, hearing. because I, I, I heard also he was not impaired. Uh, it, they just called it an accident today. So thank goodness he was not impaired. There was no alcohol involved. It was just an accident and it's no crime to have an accident. So right now it's just about moving on uh, from L.A. Uh, Police Department and Sheriff's uh, County, whoever it is, that's the authorities there that he's able to just move on as a man and worry about his health going forward. Praying for you, Tiger, and praying for your family. Yeah, totally agree, totally agree. So, uh, you gotta tell me, man. So, we look at this NBA. What you looking at? What, what, what are you saying? What, tell me, this is your time. I mean, we some people who are diehard NFL fans are having a hard time right now because there's only two seasons in the world. Football season, and waiting for football season. But look, some of us can always switch and turn on a dime. NFL's done, NBA's here, let's go. So, hey, this is prime time, baby. Where you, where you at? Well, I know you're a Laker fan, okay? So I know you can engage with me with the Lakers. The Lakers have just lost three in a row. Matter of fact, they lost four of the last five. And I believe it was you, uh, we talked about it offline. Should we be concerned? Laker fan, in my opinion, there's no reason for concern. Let's go back. We just won a championship. Took 71 days off before the new season started. That was out without preseason, and that was without a training camp. So really, they're just really getting their legs under them. We do need to be concerned about seeding, but you can't sacrifice health for seeding. So Mr. Vogel, the coach of the Lakers, need to worry about health going into the postseason and just being healthy. So we got AD who has tendinosis. Tendinosis is like the opposite of tendinitis. Tendinitis is inflammation of the Achilles. Well, he has tendinosis. 
which is breaking down of the fibers of that muscle or that tendon, which is even worse than tendonitis. So they're going to take four weeks as a precaution. And thank goodness that's it. And so in four weeks, this being the first week of those four weeks for AD to be on the shelf, he will be coming back. And what we need to be concerned about, if you're going to be concerned, uh, Vic, is LeBron James minutes. And so we're going to Frank Vogel and Frank we trust. We got to make sure that he doesn't extend himself too much. It's not because of age. It's just because we need everybody rested enough and healthy enough for the postseason. So that's the Lakers take. We're not going to turn this in just to a Lakers take unless you have something to, uh, or, or something you want to opine on with the Lakers. Then we can just yeah, go on to I, the NBA. I'm with you on health. Uh, what I think the world needs to recognize is that LeBron James and Tom Brady are some freaks of nature. Just give the man that. Yes. He was interviewed the other day about my minutes. He's like, look, am I complaining about my minutes? I'm here to win. And he talked about the competitive side. He said, I'm here to win. He is leading by example. He has been blessed his whole career not having a significant injury. Until when? He joined the Lakers and he had the groin injury. Other than that, that dude still plays 110%. And if there's uh, uh, overtime, he's going to give you all those minutes. And then some. And so whatever he's doing, they need to bottle it up and they sell it on the shelf right next to Tom Brady's product. Because, look, I'm 44 and I'm turning 45 later. Look, I tell myself I can still go out there and play some football. Man, I go out there and do one wind sprint. I'm probably on my knees. But whatever these dudes are doing, bottle it up and sell it. But I do agree where LeBron is a super alpha. He's still proven to the league what he should not, that I'm still the man. But I, I do – I am concerned that his innate competitive side – and him say, I'm going to lead my team despite the obstacles that he says, you know, I still need to step away from the table a little bit just so I can stay healthy for the real season, which is the postseason. And the league did not do a great job of doing the Lakers any justice by having these games back to back to back. So I'm wondering, even if AD's injury or these other injuries are a result of a limited offseason, particularly for the Miami Heat and the Los Angeles Lakers, the limited offseason and then the frequency of games. And is that toll having that on them? So I, I I was concerned early in the week when I looked at it and said, wow, we we losing two of our uh two of our top three players, you know, Schrader, Schroeder, as well as AD. Yeah. LeBron's got them. Uh maybe it's the time for the other players like Kuz to step up and show, look, we do have depth, but just be careful. So I am more concerned about LeBron, not from him uh overexerting himself. It's just Murphy's law. I still believe we're the best team in the West. I do believe we're the best team in the league until someone dethrones us. But it, it, it does at times to seeing the ticker go across, seeing another loss is like, oh, come on, guys. Is this something to concern? Yeah. Losing 17 point, you know, that kind of stuff. This kind of had me shaking a little bit. Yeah, uh, this is where I differ. We on paper have the best team, but we don't play on paper. The best team actually is the Utah Jazz. They are playing far superior than any other team in the league. Uh, uh, they are the best in the West. Uh, they have the best coach, to me, coach of the year, uh, with Quinn Snyder up there. They have the best bench, and they have snipers. They have rim protectors. They have everything you want. They don't have LeBron, and they don't have AD. But they're playing like a team. They're playing like one unit, and they play very well. Unselfish. They're always looking for the next pass. If you can think about the Spurs of years past or even Golden State, they're willing to make that next pass, the next pass. That's what Utah is doing right now. And they look, they look very formidable. Another team we need to be worried about. The Nets. I tell you what, Harden, KD, and they're playing these last few games without KD as well as uh, uh, Uncle Drew up there, uh, Kyrie. They are some bad boys. You can't stop them. You can't stop them. Earlier, I was talking about the sacrifices that somebody was going to have to make. It's not a sacrifice. He morphed, and that's James Harden. He morphed, and he is, he's always been a point guard. He was a point guard up at OKC. He was finishing the games at point guard when you had Russell uh, Westbrook on one side and KD on one side. It was always James Harden bringing the ball up. Well, he's doing the same thing, and now he's James Harden hybrid of, of Houston and OKC in the Nets. So he's a bad boy. 
Kyrie, it's unstoppable. He can shoot over seven footers. He can take you to the hole. He's he can spot up. He can come off the dribble. Anything that Kyrie wants to do, he can do it. And like I said, they're playing these games right now without KD, and I believe it's a four game win streak. I will touch on Gian, uh, Giannis up at the, the Bucks. We talked about him signing that big contract. I'm mad at you, boy. You made all that money, but you ain't doing nothing yet. Your game hasn't transitioned. So you need to change your game. In Milwaukee, nobody fears the deer anymore. Nobody. And I think uh, Budenholzer up there, the coach, I believe he's uh, he's on a short leash up there. But that's mm. kind of like the NBA right now, bro, in, uh, in, a, in a nutshell. Man, so you're saying the Bucks coach, dead man walking. Is it because they made it to the, the, champ, the Eastern Conference, they couldn't cross over, and – now the league in the Eastern Conference has picked up and passed them that this is it. I mean, if he doesn't take them over this, this threshold, this is it. I, that, that in my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, he's done all he can do. And it's that voice, that voice at some point in time, the players stop listening. And if, if you see the games and I'm watching the games, if you see the games, they're not doing anything different. Giannis is bringing the ball up. Everybody else is outside the wing. If Giannis can't break down, he'll pass it out. But there's no other ball movement. There's no synergy. Drew Holiday has been on the shelf. He's been injured, and he hasn't played in, in, a, in a week, maybe two weeks. And so there's no true point guard out there. And so their game is terrible. It's stagnant, and it leaves a lot to be desired. And the coach is not changing, and he's not asking more of them. Chris Milton is playing his ass off up there. But Giannis, Giannis, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, bro. You are making the money. I'm not mad at you making the money, but your game hasn't changed. We're talking about Ben Simmons earlier. Well, Ben Simmons is a point guard. Don't try to make him anything is different. Giannis, you're not a point guard. What are you? And so we are, the coaches need to help him find his true identity. Yes, he's been, a, he's been an unstoppable force, somewhat dribbling up, but everybody now knows you build a wall, take a charge. He can't make his free throws, take him out of the game. So the Bucks and Coach Budenholzer, you guys are uh, you guys are on the short list, on the short block. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they missed their window because you cannot dismiss Doc Rivers, man. Look what he did to the 76ers. <laughs> and that's why I'm excited about the playoffs yeah. because we know yeah. – the playoffs in my gym. Playoffs? We talk about playoffs? Yes. Playoffs. The playoffs <laughs> will be a totally different experience. And that's why I'm excited to see what the Brooklyn Nets can do in the playoffs. We know that Antonio's teams, they fizzle out. Doc Rivers, when he played ball, was the defensive specialist. He brought that energy to Boston with a championship. He went out to the Clippers and made a the JV team of L.A. looked somewhat reputable and almost confused the fans of L.A. who the real L.A. team was. Now, because they are who we thought they were, they fired one of the greatest coaches that they ever had. They could have got Vinny Del Negro back and they're going to do that. So here he goes to the 76ers. Same thing. No playoff. Uh, they don't have – he had a deep playoff run. So he didn't have a long uh, postseason with this team. And he's got Ben Simmons playing like he's lights out. Ben Simmons has made the all-star team. Joel Embiid is kicking tail in the paint. Totally different dude. Trust the process. So I'm very excited to watch from the Eastern Conference side, Brooklyn Nets and 76ers. And you can throw the Celtics in there. My point is the Bucks lost their wow. window. There's no way. I'm put me on record. Let's play it next year and the year after that, and the year after that. They missed their window. I still say it's the Lakers champions to lose. And if they lose it, it's either to the Brooklyn Nets or the 76ers. Bucks won't even make it to the Eastern Conference game. That's how that's how definitive I believe they missed their window. And Yana, and we talked about it. Yes, he got the money. Roll the tape, Steve. And the outtakes, roll it. Show we talked about Giannis before the season started. That, yes, you got the money. Congratulations. What are you going to do with it? As a leader, what are you going to do with it? And right now, 
Yeah. You're just the highest paid dude in Milwaukee. You just helped the, the tax bracket in Wisconsin. Appreciate you. Right. But what did you do for the Bucks? And right now, yes. James Harden, one dude, translate to Brooklyn Nets, and they are that Voltron of the NBA, and they're scary. And you should be very afraid of them in the Eastern Conference that used to be yours. And I didn't talk about Miami. So I believe Milwaukee Bucks, they lost their window. He'll be the highest paid NBA player for some years without a ring. And in five or seven years after that contract is up and he gets extremely frustrated because they're going to go through about two more coaches, he's going to want out. And then he's going to be a second tier player, third tier. They got to play number two to somebody's number one. That's how I see it. Wild team. Well, bro, <laughs> we're at the end already. That was a hard run. I want to tell our fans out there, the taking it to the house fans, that our moderator, our facilitator, second to none, Jania, wish she could be here, but she had uh, other priorities. So uh, we miss you, Jania, and she hopes to be back next week. But my closing burn is just to say thank you for those who are vaccinated, thinking about getting vaccinated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those who are wearing masks. Thank you, Joe Biden, for making it mandatory. Thank you for taking it serious on the social distancing. The numbers are coming down and they do speak for themselves. Please do not get so COVID fatigued, not now because we're, we are making the turn. So I'm asking you, please continue doing what you're doing. Hand washing, sanitizing, social distancing, wearing your mask. Please, please, please. And thank you for watching us on another episode of Taking It to the House. We all want that normalcy back. Let's play our role. Let's do our parts. We're all part of that same team of Americans. Let's do this thing. We can beat it, but we have to be disciplined and we have to handle our business like we're supposed to. Today, we spoke about a lot of topics. We focused primarily on Tiger Woods and we spent some time on the Lakers. Again, we have a social media presence. Please hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is. Look, you saw my um, handle it today on that medical piece. Give us props. Shoot some questions. We're all going to be following this Tiger Woods story very closely. A lot of us grew up with him. He's in my age bracket. We went to college together. Yes, he's at Stanford. I'm at SC. However, he has become part of the American fabric, the good days and the bad days. So if you have questions going on from that medical perspective, reach out to us on that social media. Hit us on our Twitter. Hit us on our Facebook. You can check out the credits. You'll get all those uh, all the information. So again, until next week. We see you later. Be safe. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Take it to the house. It's out. <laughs>